uh, see, we, we view ourselves much more of a technology company and a media company that, that, and a translation company that sort of translation, you know, is, is at core uh, part of our arsenal in order to enable us to remove language as a barrier to cross-cultural communication. So uh, our goal is not translation per se, but to remove language as a barrier. And one of the tools to do that, obviously, is translation. But translation without all of the other digital and technology accoutrements doesn't really amount to very much. So, if you if you start from the premise that you have this traditional legacy translation industry that right now depending on who is measuring is between a 20 and a 35 billion dollar global industry or if you want to call it the localization industry that has evolved over a number of years with certain basic rules and procedures and requirements and the people that become translators have had certain kinds of education and requirements and tests and valuations. And so the industry sort of has created an infrastructure that rewards and values things that were created in a legacy world, an analog world. And the world that we're living in is a digital world and all of the rules are different not some of the rules all of the rules are different and so it's really fascinating to be in this area because most of the people are living with an analog mindset and they're very frustrated and don't understand why what they try to do doesn't give them the kind of results they want to do because they're not, they really haven't changed their overall way of thinking. It's, if you want to, it, it, just as an example or an analogy that might make it more clear, um, in, in, in our field, you know, you're very familiar with Napster, or, you know, in the, okay. So, so Napster was a very disruptive technology in the music world. And the five large multi-billion dollar music companies really didn't like this because this disrupted their very secure way of doing things. So when Napster came out and Sean Fanning, age 19, came up with it, their immediate response was to get their copyright lawyers into place and started suing grandmothers and teenagers because that's the way they thought they would bury it. And after five years, those five companies lost 50% of their market value. So, you know, but so given that, you, you know, so we, we are very, very um, committed to allowing the, the crowd to express itself in the way that it wants, knowing that there's completely different sets of standards and rules and costs and prices and people. So, uh, so that's sort of, you know, sort of a framework and a background. We, we, what you see on our website is a consumer-facing video playpen or a sandbox that right now we have about 3 million page views a month where individual people or small organizations upload videos and play with them, transcribe them, caption them, translate them. Maybe some people are doing some commercial things, but our business model today is the fact that we have an enterprise business and people like General Electric, Electronic Arts, the U.S. Army, Bank America, Symantec, Harvard, um, TED, Adobe, EMC, on and on and on who are all large corporations that have very large libraries of video assets that are either marketing, instruction, corporate communication, advertising, education, information, are wanting these media viewed by people in other languages. And they, you know, whereas on the website, people casually do one video 
in one language or two languages with a handful of translators. But when you want to do hundreds or thousands of videos into scores of languages using hundreds or thousands of translators with specific permissioning by video, by language, with quality control that meets your requirements by video, by language, you need a very scalable, profound, back-end content management system. So people pay us to integrate our functionality into their video players or platforms. And all of our commercial clients who have a great, you know, a high percentage, very north of 95% of all of the videos that are on our site, but you can't see any of those videos because those videos are password protected. Uh, okay. Those are all residing on our client servers. So when they serve up 100,000 video views, that's being served up from their server. So... Exactly. Yes, and, and we have, but, you know, when people do volunteer things on the web, there's two things that they want, recognition and reward. And depending on what it is and where it is and who the people are, it could be much more recognition or it could be much more reward. Reward, usually, in this context, is something in the area called virtual currency new field that's going on called game-based mechanics. Okay, so um, uh, I'm sure you're familiar. The oldest virtual currency in the world was S&H green stamps. When, when, when you went into a supermarket and you spent $30, $32, you got little stamps and then you pasted them in a book. And then when you got a certain number of books, you could either get free product. And then the, the, the largest, most best used virtual currency in, is frequent flyer miles for the airline. And, and, you know, and so if you go onto the web, you have something like uh, when Second Life started, you had Linda you know, you, you, you have virtual currency that you can earn by playing games. Even Disney with games for five years old on the web, people earn virtual currency and they can buy wallpaper or they could buy shoes or they could get animals. It's an exchange for something of value. And that value might not be monetary. It could be psychic. I'm sure you're very familiar with pros.com. Okay. Henry Dotterer is a very long and dear friend. And, and, and Henry is by far and away um, the largest job site workplace for professional translators to find work, to communicate, to share, to learn. They have powwows. They have kudos points. They have all kinds of things to, you know, kudos points are virtual currency. And you go down at the other end of the spectrum, you have probably at the low end of the spectrum, you have Mechanical Turk. OK, uh, where, where, where people who are offering, you know, a tenth of a cent or wh whatever it is for doing phrases, words, then you have a, 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 an exploding number of people that are taking combinations of machine translation, you know, whether it's Google Translate or Sistran or any other number of things, few people thus far. Or, or translating video. That's just now happening. So there's lots of web pages that are in multiple languages, but the videos that reside on those web pages are still only viewable in English. And so I would say tens or hundreds of thousands of people that are doing some level of phrases or, um, uh, you know, word pairs or algorithms for volunteering between language A and language B that are just beginning to play with it. And they might be doing it as a volunteer. They might be doing it as uh, micro payments.
and lots of people are in this field. So what we are in the process of doing is actually creating what I'll call a farm team. I don't know if you know that phrase from American baseball, get the highest salaries and, you know, they, they make a lot of money, but there are farm teams that start off with class A and then class double A and class triple A so that if you're a 17 year old or 18 year old graduate high school, then you might play in an A league for a year and a half or two years to, 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 to mature, to grow, to learn, and you might get paid very little money. But if you're really good in a farm team, you know, and each major league, like the New York Yankees have a, a, have a, 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 an A farm team, and then they'll move you up to a double A and you get, and you get, and you get more money. And then if you really perform very well, then you get up to a triple A. Uh, we're attempting to create that because we have so many translators that are spending so much time doing volunteer translation and there are no tools to help people, to train them, to guide them. So we're, I, I can't go into the details because it's part of our next major commercial offering. We're going to be wanting to create a huge, huge workplace that's going to enable hopefully millions of volunteer translators who enjoy it, maybe you're making a few dollars now and then, who maybe want to pursue it as a career to get together to be able to create a community. Google has very aggressively wanted to use our data, and they ask us if we could supply it to them, but they're not giving us anything for it. So when we do it with professional time coders and captioners, we know that, you know, different language pairs expand and contract, and we know that they're likely to be in. So the people that do our work are aware of that, and they do that that way. But that's the whole, that's the whole point, is there are only rules when, because that's the way it's always done, and someone artificially has decided that that's the best way to do it, and there are certain price points associated with that, because if you go to traditional subtitling, traditional subtitling is done in a studio with character generators, or you're using Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, so there's certain ways to do it, and they have certain inherent costs. And it takes X amount of time and X amount of dollars when you want to subtitle a television show or a movie or a video. And that's the way it's been done. And when it's taught in school, there's a list of rules. This is how many lines you have. This is how many characters you have. And what we're saying is, and, and if, you, if you want to, if you take a look at the content available in the world, do you think that the work done by the $30 billion translation industry is translating? I'll bet no one's ever asked you that question. No, I think it is a tiny fraction of 1% that in order for the world to share its knowledge, that has to get significantly larger. And people can't afford to do things the way they're doing it because no one will pay for it. So there needs to be orders of magnitude changes to how this is done in order to have huge volumes of information, knowledge, inspiration available. In, in other words, we, we find that the people who translate uh, as volunteers want to be making a difference in the world. They have very little ability in their normal lives to make a difference. And when they find that they find an inspirational piece of media that they can spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, two hours, 12 hours doing something and get personal credit for it, they feel that they are making a difference in a very small way. For example, with iEarn, which is a, a network of um, 40,000 teachers in 135 countries with two and a half million students to create language learning curriculum by subtitling music videos, the lyrics of music videos. We, we think that language learning and engagement with language can be greatly facilitated by the actual act of subtitling videos.
pros is at the bottom of the top end of the market. In other words, just 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 let me let me give you an example. Um, there is the website which you might want to take a look at called Shutterstock. So that's between a, it's it, it's it's 140 million words. It's it's about an average. Let's say it's 300 million words, and they make their money by people buying images, and they want to have these images available to people in 10 languages. Okay, so that's three billion words. But the purpose of the translation is to maximize SEO. Do you know what SEO is? Search engine optimization. Okay, and SEO is the single driver of more revenue on the web than anything. You at Monterey are training your people for and the level of quality that the worst prose translator provides, what you call the top, is at least an order of magnitude better than what is needed to maximize SEO. So you're, you're talking – so if you're talking about three billion words – and you talk about the least, what's the least expensive price per word that you've ever heard any professional translation agency charge for work? The least expensive on any project ever. Is it three cents a word? Ten cents would be 300 million. One cents would be 30 million. So three cents a word is 90 million dollars. Okay, so, so this company has a budget of a hundred thousand dollars to do the translation and the least expensive work is ninety million dollars so and there are thousands of companies that are going to have these kinds of needs so the people that graduate from monterey with master's degree in linguistics aren't going to be doing this we are creating the technology to aggregate engrams and we're going to be doing machine translation passes. And then those popular engrams and only those engrams are going to be reviewed, not translated, but reviewed and commented by translators that are going to get paid. So they're not going to be paid by word. There might be a hundred engrams on a page and they are going to be working so many dollars per page. And we have actually had research done that the best work is done by people who are not trained linguists. The purpose of this is not that. So we think that there are going to be an order of magnitude more jobs created in the translation field with requirements that you're not even thinking about. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is not part of our discussion. It's the reality. So, you know, it's going to happen whether people like it or not. And people can bitch and moan and say, oh, it's terrible and the quality isn't as good and it shouldn't be. But they can bitch and moan all. This is going to happen. And DotSub is going to be a driver of participating and making sure anyway be available in multiple languages anywhere near close to the cost structure of the way things are done right now. So uh, volunteer translation and volunteer editing and volunteer translation is going to be a very important thing that's going to be creating huge amounts of new revenue, but on different bases.